Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In today's video we're going to be solving a Physics 7b torque practice problem working with lumber. As usual, if you find this video helpful, leave a like and subscribe, it, it helps this channel a lot. So this is the problem statement that we're going to be working with today. Feel free to pause to copy the problem on your notebook. So we have uh, two construction workers are carrying a 4 meter long piece of lumber of mass 40 kilograms. The workers hold the lumber at points uh, A, 0 0.7 meters from the left end, and B, at the right end. Our instructions are to draw an extended force diagram and find the forces at points A and B. We, might, we may assume all of the forces are completely vertical. Okay, so as you can see, I have um, everything that's necessary for us to solve this problem here on my notes. So I have the uh, lumber piece right here and I do have our measurements. So this is 0 0.7 meters from the left. Also, we were told that the entire length of the lumber is four meters, which means that this distance from A to B is equal to 3.3 meters. So that the entire thing adds up to four, right? We also know that the uh, lumber has a mass of 40 kilograms, which means that uh, there's gonna be a force by gravity equal to the mass of the lumber times g, so force by gravity is going to be 400 newtons. Now we have two instructions here. First of all, we need a complete extended force diagram. Um, so let's just go ahead and start by drawing the forces that are acting on this system, and then we can go ahead and figure out the magnitudes of both of those forces. So we do have a force by gravity, and remember, uh, this is always going to be acting in the center point of your figure. So force by gravity goes right here in the center. And this is going to be exactly 400 newtons going down. Now we do have two construction workers holding this lumber and because they're holding it, uh, they're applying a force upwards, right? In order, to, uh, in order for the lumber to not go down, they need to be pushing it up. So we do have two forces, which I'm going to go ahead and call force A and force B. I don't know the relative magnitude of these forces at the moment. So I'm just, this is a very rough sketch that I'm going to be using. And once I figure out all of my numbers, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, maybe if I have time and just redo this entire thing. Now, uh, the only thing that I'm missing right here is that, um, this is exactly at the middle, so this distance is going to be 2 meters long. There we go. So we have, th so this is already an extended force diagram. Uh, we just need to figure out the magnitudes over here in order to be able to scale the vectors. But at this point, the extended force diagram we, we figure out already. So how are we going to figure out uh, two of the forces? We have three forces and we're missing two of them, which is never a good thing. But let's just take a step back and analyze our problem. So why do we know? Well, we know that this lumber is not moving. Everybody is at rest. So let's see. Because this um, lumber is not moving, then that means that the um, net force acting on this lumber is gonna be equal to zero. Now we also know that the lumber is not rotating, so th they're holding the lumber still. So because the uh, lumber is not being rotated, then that means that the net torque on the lumber is equal to zero. This is due to the fact that delta V is equal to zero. This is due to the fact that delta omega is equal to zero. So we do know those things. Now, something that's always tricky about these sort of problems is um, whenever we have a torque problem, but the pivot point is not clearly defined. And this is one of those cases in which you guys get to pick whatever you want as a pivot point. Now, I always like to go with the natural pivot points of the problem. What do I mean by that? Well, um, this point right here is a natural pivot point because if I remove this lumber, if I remove uh, person B, then uh, the lumber is going to start swinging around person A. So if, this, if, if B gets removed, everything is going to start swinging around this point. Another natural pivot point that we could choose is this one, 
because if I remove A, everything is going to start swinging around B. So to me, those are the two most natural pivot points that you could pick. And uh, in my case, I, you know, we just did a problem in which I solved, in which I just picked the right, uh, the left pivot point. So literally just randomly, it doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm just going to go ahead and pick this point as my pivot point. But again, I'm just doing this because I just finished the video in which I picked the other one. It really doesn't matter. So long as you know that you have to pick a pivot point, you're going to be good. Now let's just go ahead and state that our net torque around this pivot point is equal to zero. Now we need to expand on that. Let's see. So how many forces do we have in total? Three. How many of those forces are generating a torque? Well, that would be two because force by lumberjack B is not generating a torque because he is applying the force exactly at the pivot point. So R is equal to zero. Okay, so now let's just rewrite this statement with the two torques that we do have. So we have um, one torque due to gravity. So let me just go ahead. So this means that torque by gravity plus torque by lumberjack A, they have to be equal to zero. Now at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute with our torque equation. So torque, the, the full equation is RF sine of this angle. All of these forces are completely vertical, which means that every single time that sine appears is going to be 90 degrees. So this is one. So I'm just going to go ahead and use RF, if anything, because I don't want to be writing sine, 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 and then just have it be equal to one every single time. So in this problem, our R and F are always exactly uh, perpendicular. So that is why this works. So let's just go ahead and do that. So let's see. Uh, torque by gravity is distance from pivot to gravity, which is two meters. And then times force by gravity, which is 400 newtons. Torque by lumberjack A is distance from pivot point to lumberjack A, which is why I got the 3.3 meters. And then the force by lumberjack A is actually the thing that we don't know. So I'm just going to go ahead and write it like that. And this has to be equal to zero. Please know at this point that I didn't do positives or negatives over here. Um, it is important that you remember that torque is a vector, which is a magnitude and a direction. In this case, these numbers are going to represent the magnitude, but the direction is going to be represented with a plus or a minus here. If you use your right hand rule, you'll see that torque by gravity is going out of the page. So torque by gravity is going out of the page and torque due to lumberjack A is going into the page if you use your right hand rule. So because we do have uh, two directions over here, one of these needs to be plus and one of these needs to be minus. Otherwise, your equation is understanding that they're going in the same direction and that is not what's happening. So I always tell my students, you need to be actively mindful about this part because it's probably one of the most important, um, you know, things um, that can go wrong here. Do not uh, not remembering this. So let's see. Uh, usually the convention is that out of the page is plus and into the page is minus. So because I like standard units, I like SI units, and I'm just going to go ahead and keep it like that. So this is out, so this is plus, and then this is minus. All right, so now that that is figured out, uh, we are just going to go ahead and solve for force of A. So let's just, let's just do that. So FA is equal to 2 times 400 divided by 3.3 and that means that this force is um, 2 400 divided by 3.3 did I divide? no divided by 3.3 and that is going to be equal to 242.42 um, Newtons. There we go. 
So now let's see. Let's just analyze our problem. We figure out. So now that we figure out force A, we need to figure out what force B is. And at this point, we actually have two options. The first option is, okay, so we use this pivot point to find this force. Well, I guess we can do exactly the same, except use this as the pivot point to find this force. And that would be totally correct. If you switch your pivot point, if you move the star over here, then you could find F of B by you do, doing this exact same procedure. But, um, and this will be using this equation. But what I'm proposing is, let's remember that we have another equation, which is that all of the forces need to add up to zero. So we have three forces out of which we know what two of them are. This is 242.42. So let's just go ahead and balance our forces. So our net force needs to be equal to zero. We have two forces going up, one force going down. So we have FA plus 242.42 minus 400, and this needs to be equal to zero. So let's just go ahead. Uh, as you can see, this is very easy because I'm about to find force by A. So force by A is just uh, 400 minus uh, 242.42, 157.58 newtons. And there you go, final answer. So this was actually very easy, right? I mean, I guess this isn't really particularly hard, but we could just do it in one step. Also, why did I say that this is force A? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So this is 242.42, the one that I found. So this is actually force B. So this is force B. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, so nothing really changes, I just, mess this there we go yeah so i just flipped it a little bit but everything is still fine so it's not that this method is particularly hard but if you have all of your forces except one then there really is no reason to just use this equation is way easier uh, so at this point we are uh done with this problem so i guess we can just rescale this a little bit you could just you know Put a big 400 and then a 242 which is kind of big and then a smaller arrow over here 157.5 and then a complete extended force diagram you know has some distances so 0 0.7 This is two, this is 3.3 .3 meters, and there we go. This is a complete extended force diagram and these arrows are better, you know, in terms of the magnitude. So at this point, the problem is complete. Um, so anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed this problem and you, that you're finding these videos helpful. If you are finding them helpful, please leave a like. It helps this channel a lot. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.